of Thailand are singing. Singing loudly to announce that this is their territory. Their haunting songs are meant to keep other gibbon troops at bay, but their cries have done nothing to deter a far more threatening predator. Man is directly responsible for wide-scale decimation of the gibbons. From one million a century ago to just 100,000 today. And yet, out of this carnage, has emerged a strong campaign to save this ape. No given better exemplifies the face of that new hope than Jeruni. Hers is a most remarkable story. Hunters and captors, raids and rehabilitation, as this adorable creature struggles, against all odds, to survive. Park are seldom more than a branch or two away from mother. In fact, when youngster tires of this treetop travel, mother's always there to carry her on. The bonds between these white-handed gibbons are exceptionally strong. They're the only apes to mate for life, and families will travel together each day in search of sustenance. By necessity, Jeruni's mother always takes in a water hole on her daily territorial circuit. Spray from the waterfall, allowing her to collect droplets of water. It's a slow process, and nowhere near effective enough in quenching thirst. What follows is a demonstration of how primitively gibbons drink. Mother soaks her fur in water, then licks it off before Jeruni snatches her share. 
Mother then shakes her entire body, a display performed at times of high emotion. Back in the upper foliage, Jeruni challenges mother once more for nourishment, this time over the seed of a mango. Time and again, motherly love gives way to childish greed. Throughout their lives, gibbons will roam a territory smaller than an average suburb. It's a territory in which they compete with other gibbons, a species which can be born either gold or black, and where mixing and mating takes place without distinction. In the territory adjoining that control by Jeruni's family, Another young gibbon plays with his mother. These babies are all the more precious because gibbons only give birth every two years. This then is the crux of their current crisis. Left alone in the wild, gibbon populations increase very slowly. Break that pattern with the intervention of man and their numbers plummet quickly and dramatically. Gibbons are also capable of killing or badly injuring one another. Our crews witness two adults tear apart and kill their own baby while these two young adults pursued and snapped at each other for more than an hour. That fight stirs Jeruni's mother to song. Her species is famed for its evocative territorial calls. In time, she'll develop five different cries of pleasure, another four calls for fear or discontent. The other distinguishing feature of white-handed gibbons is their ability to travel at high speed through the trees. Jeruni is graduating superbly. Like all gibbons, her arms are very long. They stretch to the ground, allowing her and her family to swing and leap long distances in a movement known as brachiation. But as relatively safe as this treetop life is now for Jerunian family, 
It hasn't always been this way. We're about to travel back in time, before Jeruni was born, to witness situations that have killed off hundreds of her relatives. that hunt and kill gibbons takes us to the northern border regions of Thailand and Burma. The Karen tribes who live in these heavily forested hills are famous not only for wearing ornamental rings around their necks, but also for the way many of their kind hunt gibbons. The Karens tell me it's been common practice for other tribesmen in the hills to shoot, then cook and eat gibbons. Also widespread has been the practice of capturing gibbon babies to be sold as pets. Regrettably, the practice takes a heavy toll. To capture just one baby, as many as ten other gibbons may be shot dead. When you take a baby gibbon for the market, you have to kill the mother. Most people were not, are not good shots, so they kill both. A lot of time when the mother falls from the tree with the gibbon, with the baby on her chest, the baby land first. And so you get a lot of dead gibbons. When you see one in the market, you've lost eight or ten. Pits at Patalong heads Thailand's Wild Animal Rescue Foundation. Sometimes people sell things to the tourists, like gibbon heads. For a time, they were popular amongst tourists, and they kill gibbons, cut off its head and stuffed it. Gibbons who survived the tribal hunting sessions are smuggled south by road. As we're about to see, this young male and female are about to undergo a most remarkable stint in captivity. One will become an attraction in a bar, the other, a household pet. Trade in exotic creatures still flourishes at Bangkok's weekend animal markets. All manner of creatures from around the world can be purchased here. You can even negotiate to buy an endangered tiger at a later place in time. The same goes for gibbons. The girly bars of Thailand resort to the most exotic of attractions to bring in the tourist dollar. Gibbons are a favourite in many. This bar, the gibbon that will eventually become Jeruni's father, 
has been purchased from the Bangkok markets for just $500. He's a star attraction. But he's also subjected to a cruel and unnatural process. Where gibbons are normally active by day and sleep at night, this gibbon is forced to stay awake throughout the night. The ritual clearly exhausts Jeruni's future father. By day, his plight becomes even worse. He's confined by a chain so short he can't sleep. And later tied to a post outside to attract still more tourists. His black cousins fear no better. The world's most active ape, restricted by the world's shortest tether. All over Thailand, gibbons are still being exploited. We found Buddhist monks keeping them in crude cages. <laughs> Private owners treating them like pets, allowing them to run free at religious gatherings. Resorts that keep them as amusements, where they establish an easy rapport with the youngsters. The more capitalistic traders generate good profits simply by charging tourists to have their photos taken with a gibbon. into my arms will earn for his keepers up to a thousand US dollars a week. A fortune for his owners. A misfortune for him. Gibbons aren't the only creatures exploited here either. creatures in Thailand, so ruthless is the way many gibbons are treated that exploitation is fast equating to extinction. Not all of the gibbons sold in the markets of Bangkok are so ruthlessly exploited. This gorgeous youngster will lead a charmed life in a private home. Ever so inquisitive in the first months of life, she'll grow into a perfect mother. She's a ball of fur at this stage of life, and still possessing all of the innocence of youth, despite her own parents' slaughter. Her guardian is Kun Dung, a Thai woman so devoted to her young charge that she spoils it as if it were her own child. Despite the suffocating tropical heat of central Bangkok, her daily ritual involves drying and grooming.
And to add new dimensions to the concept of pampering, there's a dash of talcum. Followed by a disposable mappy. Dung treats her baby gibbon with considerable devotion, right down to a formula of sacred cow's milk fed twice a day. The mixture is so wholesome that the gibbon will grow quickly in the next year. gesture appears to be just so much fun. And yet it's a critical element in teaching this given the skills it will need in the future. Because, as we're about to see, the given baby that acts so cutely at this stage of life grows into a property-destroying troublemaker when it reaches full size. Like so many others, this gibbon will eventually become too much of a handful for Kundan. The gibbon will be given away to be rehabilitated and eventually return to the wild. Kun Lloyd would find it very difficult to give up her gibbon. Their bond is such that they're almost inseparable. So strong is her care and concern that she insists on clothing it, quite often in the brightest of shorts. Most days, they can be seen strolling the back streets of Bangkok together. The devotion even extends to the meals they share. <laughs> Kun Pui, on the other hand, has to balance her time between her pet gibbon and a pack of dogs. They're forever giving the gibbon a hard time. Treatment she more than makes up for by pampering the gibbon. The session begins with a thorough drenching. Followed by a trim to remove knots. And a blow dry. Finally, a glass of that famous soft drink. The hounds are not impressed. Sushada has already given her pet given away after it began savagely biting all of her friends. She released her eight-year-old given into the care of a rehabilitation centre in Bangkok and now spends every Sunday afternoon visiting it for a session of washing and grooming. The problem she found was that the given began thinking of her as a partner and became hostile to anybody else who came near them. It's a common scenario. 
one that means that most baby pet gibbons have to be abandoned once they become adults. <laughs> the heart-wrenching decision to surrender a family's gibbon is never an easy one. But this pet, the one that will soon mother Jeruni, has become way too aggressive. Volunteers struggle to subdue it. They've been called in by the Wild Animal Rescue Foundation, an international relief operation that is specialising in saving gibbons. This is an increasingly frequent routine, with the rescued gibbons transported to one of their rehabilitation centres. The Thai government is also stepping up its fight to save the gibbon, with officers of the Royal Forestry Department appointed to raid suspect properties. In this Bangkok restaurant, they uncover a wildlife menagerie containing not only gibbons, but many birds. The gibbons, they warn staff, will be confiscated unless permits for them have been issued. And since no new permits are being handed out following a recent Get Tough ban, the likelihood of these gibbons being taken is high. Many of the gibbons that have been confiscated or surrendered are taken to Krabok Koo, a rehabilitation centre administered by both the Forestry Department and the Wild Animal Rescue Foundation. The mastermind of the foundation is Leone Vegajiva. We've had one, one given who, who has so far survived four years in the wild, so we have hope. Leone began collecting injured gibbons when she moved to Thailand permanently. When we got her, her back was just a mass of bleeding sores from where the cigarettes had been stubbed out in her back for years. These days, a rescue mission has become a full-scale crusade involving dozens of volunteers from around the world. And as big-hearted as she is, she still has to face other people's cruelty. This is a three-year-old gibbon. She, she lives with me in my house. And uh, somebody, about 10 days ago, put an elastic band around her neck. We don't know who did it. And we didn't know, because her fur is long. And it was only, only three days ago that we, we noticed she wasn't eating and she was, she was very weak and she was frightened and in pain. So we went to the, the vet and he checked her over and he found an, an elastic band had grown right into her neck. In all, there are more than 100 gibbons to be looked after at Krabok Koo, many injured and mistreated. Others, like this one, sedated to allow dental surgery. But the real excitement here at Krabok Koo centres on these two golden gibbons. The same female who witnessed being so violently transported from a Bangkok home. The male confiscated in a police raid. Relocated together, they're about to undergo a very rare event in captivity, giving birth. Their baby, none other than Jeruni. In the days before the birth, both mother and father 
appear to be in perfect harmony, as evidenced by this amazing display of synchronous body shaking. They started grooming each other and then they started also copulating. And now they've been together for about one and a half years as a really good, healthy and really happy couple. And as you can see, Nuni is pregnant uh, now. Dutch volunteer Esther Locke is keeping an almost constant watch on the mother-to-be. It can happen in a few weeks, but it also can happen tomorrow. You, uh, you can feel, we try to feel every day, if the baby's moving, if you hear anything. And you can also see the area around the nipples is already getting a lot bigger. The hours before birth are exhilarating for the father. It's as if he's intuitively aware of the events about to happen, swinging even more actively than before from one end of his compound to the other. But mother is clearly nervous. She begins chewing on the wire. She's finding it hard to hold down food. And there's a clear sign of distress on her face. Throughout the experience, the two remain very close. Then, minutes before giving birth, she moves into the box erected just for this moment. As Jeruni begins to emerge, Mother will sit upright and use her own hand to pull Jeruni clear. The following hours are pure magic as Mother and Jeruni bond. Six months after Jeruni's captive birth, she's grown into a strong and inquisitive youngster. She's beginning to display all of the agility she'll need to climb and swing in trees back in the wild. But despite this newfound independence, Jeruni is forever trying to rejoin Mother. These are days of wonder, with Jeruni and parents about to be relocated, their new home allowing them far more freedom. Place of beauty and peace. Here, gibbons, both gold and black, live in such a stress free environment that wrestling and playing are commonplace.
surroundings are so peaceful that the gibbons are more relaxed in the way they drink. Or catch a meal. For Jeruni's mother, too, black gibbons are extremely curious and friendly. They pin her to the ground in a gesture she eventually finds too overwhelming. She flees, Jeruni clinging tight. For Jeruni and parents, this is a time of preparation for yet another transfer shortly, this time back into the wild. For the remaining Gibbons, who are here and is akin to a holiday home, a place of ease and leisure spent at ground level, a level wild Gibbons would never venture for fear of predators. spectacular limestone islands of Panya Bay, just north of Phuket, the most ambitious project has been launched to save the Gibbon. Australian expatriate Patrick Cullen is heading up a group of international volunteers taking part in this world first. The idea behind this project is uh, to take these gibbons that are in cages uh, as pets or bars and to bring them back in, into areas which are now extinct of gibbons in the wild so that they can repopulate those areas. The group, part of the Wild Animal Rescue Foundation, have been allocated three islands in Panya Bay in which gibbons, confiscated or surrendered from captivity, are to be released. We know they're going to stay together here, it's just a small island. We'll test them on the larger island later on if they if they behave uh, in the way that they should here as gibbons do foraging and calling and, and grooming each other uh, if everything goes well well we'll put them deep into the rainforest and we'll feed them out there again probably for about a year or so uh, until that we're sure that they can live by themselves in the forest and then they can live as a family of gibbons out there and uh, that will be the first real family of gibbons back in Phuket for more than 10 years since they were poached to extinction. Come on. Come on. It's just letting him know that he shouldn't be on the ground for his benefit, not ours. If he was to come on the ground, if someone wanted to take him, it's a very easy target. Also, in the wild, a lot of their predators uh, would be on the ground. Um, so we have to actually get them off the ground. We have to, we have to practice to be in the trees and not on the ground. English volunteer Sasha Gilmore lives for months at a time near this given island. The use of this island is a training ground for young gibbons. Uh, we take them out of the cage. Uh, most of the gibbons, the two gibbons that have been here, have never been out of the cage before. And this small area is a very contained area so we can release them and watch them and see how they're doing. They learn how to forage here, they learn how to, to swing. When we first release them, we find that their branch selection isn't very good. Sometimes they'll fall to the ground, a tree is rotten. Um, so it's very important that they learn how to, to branch select 
and also to, to play as well. Sasha's time in Panya Bay has given her great insight into given behaviour. One of the forms of play is called play chase and what they do is just t chase each other all over the island and this not only do they have great enjoyment from doing this but also it's a great practice for when they're actually older uh, and they have to actually swing for the trees very quickly for some reason or other. Uh, maybe to guard their territory or maybe um, to go to fruiting trees, but they have to travel at great speed. The gibbons can be quite aggressive, can't they? They can be. And in yes. fact, you've got a couple of scars to bear um, testament to that? Just little ones here. Uh, this is a tooth mark here and a tooth mark there. Uh, not very serious. Uh, gibbon bites can be a lot worse than that. Later, Patrick shows us two gold gibbons destined for release, just like our very own Jeruni. The two are so mischievous at this stage of life, most of their waking hours are spent wrestling. These are significant moments. They are last in captivity as carers prepare to release them and Gibbons like Jeruni back into the wild. Do, 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 do. Jeruni is very active on the day that she's to be released. The parents and brother have already been freed. Jeruni held a few days longer to ensure her climbing skills are well home. In a day of high adventure, Jeruni appears to steer her own destiny. The moment of freedom has arrived. In the upper branches, Jeruni's family waits. The reunion is especially emotional, not only because Jeruni's mother is still lactating, but also because the family has grown once more. Another orphan gibbon, slightly older than Jeruni, has been adopted by Jeruni's parents, and the two youngsters are instant playmates. Both will live with their parents for at least the first eight years of their lives. That is, until they're old enough to fend for themselves.
Suddenly, Jeruni is still dependent on her mother. But slowly, she's weaning her off her milk, giving her a taste of what will become her staple diet. Throughout the day, Jeruni frolics around Mother. The new recruit, on the other hand, is really getting into the swing of things. It's a highly significant sight that we're witnessing one of the first given families to be reintroduced to areas where their species has long been wiped out. In the wild in Thailand Lives an ape that sings like man Singing wild and singing free This ape's name is Jadun In the wild in Thailand Lives an ape that sings like man Singing wild and singing free This ape's name is Jadungi 